We have no opening statement. I should have yeah. Can you walk us through the timeline? When do you all, when the school knew about the April incident in 2016 and the evaluation process from there, knowing that a month later you've been arrested uh, for sexual assault accusations as well? Can you walk us through that timeline and the evaluation process? Yes. Yeah, you know, what I can say is, and, and I know it's frustrating, that, you know, because of student privacy laws, both federal and state, we're restricted on what we can say and what we can't say. Uh, you know, and, and as we've talked about before, this institution has policies and procedures in place, you know, and, and, and they're governed by both federal and state laws, and we follow those policies and procedures, and we're very consistent in how we do things. So, again, I can't talk about specific cases to your question. Why you allowed him to play knowing that he had been accused of sexual assault twice in the span of a month? Again, what I, what I can talk about, I, I can't talk about specific situations, but I can talk about a process. And we have 750 student athletes, and it's important that we provide due process to all of our student athletes, to all students on this campus. And so again, we follow that process. And you know, I encourage you that process is public. You can go to our website. Jake can direct you to our website on campus, where you can read about that process that's available to all of our students on this Twin Cities campus. Football. I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Last year, the football players were suspended when there was a uh, EOA investigation. This year. With Lynch, he wasn't. Why is it two different things here? Uh, uh, Chip, again, with, with, with our process that's in place, uh, any student athlete, um, if there's a criminal investigation taking place, uh, that student athlete does not participate. Again, any student athlete involved in an EOA process can participate until findings are made against him or her. Mark, is, uh, is Reggie still on the team? Yes, he, he's Reggie is a member of our basketball team. I understand that you're limited in, in the details that you can give us. So I'm not asking for too many specifics here, but can you tell us when you first learned of these allegations as well as when the EOAA report was completed? Again, due to student privacy, I, I can't get into specifics. Uh, what I can tell you is with any of our student athletes, you know, in any of our 25 programs, uh, if, if something is brought across campus, it's brought to my attention, but I cannot get into specifics of this specific case. What's his status? You said he's still on the team. Is he going to be playing tomorrow? Um, his lawyer this morning said he's planning to appeal. Is he tomorrow? Uh, Reggie Lynch will not be playing tomorrow. He is suspended. From? From athletic competition. But you said he's still on the team. He is a member of our basketball program. I spoke with one woman this morning who says that she went to athletic officials, sat down with them in the early part of 2017, and she brought up multiple accusations against Lynch, and she said that those were brushed aside. They were called personal problems by your office. Were you aware of these allegations against I have many meetings with, with people, so I, I don't know who you're referring to, so I, I can't answer that question. Sure. Mark, has the you forwarded this to the police? Again, specific allocations, uh, uh, incidents, I can't get into specifics, uh, so I'm not aware of that, no. And uh, while this whole process plays out, is it indefinite or what? Yeah, he, he is suspended from athletic competition. Again, I, I can't talk about specific situations, but he's suspended from, from athletic competition. Indefinitely? He's suspended from athletic competition. Pending resolution of this, or...? Again, I can't talk about specifics, and I apologize. I mean, I can't tell you how frustrating it is for all of you to hear me to say this, but, but what I can tell you, any student on this campus, don't talk about student athlete because they're students first. The 750 kids that represent this institution are students first. They all have access to the same policies and procedures that we have in place. And part of those policies and procedures are they can appeal. Uh, Reggie from team activities and from Saturday's game when it was that decided? Uh, that was the decision that I made today. Did you meet with Coach Patino and Reggie about the decision? Uh, I, again, I, I involved Coach Patino and the student athlete involved, yes. With the suspension, is he allowed to be involved in any team activities or is it completely out while this plays out? No, he's just suspended from athletic competition. Practice? Yes, sir.
office have a meeting with the activist and alum, Abby Honnell, because she tweeted that she sat them down in your office last year, brought it to their attention even further. Is, is that something that you recall in, in that meeting and knowing more information? I did have an opportunity to meet with Abney. Uh, I don't remember the exact time. Uh, she was very interested in our training for our student athletes. Uh, and as you know, I've talked about this at board meetings. You know, our student athletes on average have four hours of training on sexual misconduct, academic integrity, gambling, et cetera. Uh, in addition, this past year, you know, we had a chance to meet with our student athlete advisory council. Uh, this was last spring. And the feedback we got from our advisory council was that they would really appreciate the opportunity to have one-on-one -on -one meetings as teams with our EOA office and with our office of community standards. So in addition to having those four hours of training, each one of our teams, including student athletes, had a chance to meet with EOA to learn more about that process. Each one of our teams had a chance to meet with OCS, Office of Community Standards, to talk about those processes. And we also uh, worked with a group called the Dan Beebe Group, which is an organization that focuses on human relations risk management. And they provided training not only to our student athletes and coaches, but to our staff. So this year, we'll have about seven hours of training for all 750 student athletes. Go on, another question. Yeah, um, so I think for campus it's a difficult situation because a lot of people are feeling like, here we go again. Is there anything that the athletic department learned from uh, a year ago with the football team or anything you can take away from that situation of how the school wants to handle this any differently or the same? Or what can you tell um, maybe students and people on campus who are feeling like, why does this keep happening in the athletics department? Well, I think we've very, been very consistent in our process and, and how we handle these things. And, and as I just mentioned before, you know, we talked to our student athlete leaders, our, our SAC group. Uh, we got feedback directly from them. You know, we've had a chance, and, and I'm thankful for EOA. I'm thankful for the Office of Community Standards who took time to meet with all of our teams. I'm thankful for the Dan Beebe group who took time to not only train our teams, train our head coaches, but to train all of our staff. We're a large organization. I mean, if you take a step back, 25 sports, 750 student athletes, almost 300 full-time staff. It's a big organization. We understand we're very visible, but we feel like we've been very proactive in educating and training all of us to make sure we handle it the right way. Your first on the aisle. Go back to uh, the question about your meeting with Abby. She says she didn't just ask uh, about the training tactics, but specifically raised concerns about Reggie. Uh, do you remember that? Again, we had a very productive meeting with Abby. It was great to hear from her and learn from her and her perspective. Uh, and again, we talked about the steps we were doing, the steps we were trying to do to make our program better as we move forward. Mark, are you able to talk about what the appeal process looks like? Uh, for any student athlete, again, I, I encourage you to go to our university website. That, that's the amazing thing. It's out there. People can read about it. But again, any student on the Twin Cities campus take out any student on this campus can when they go through this process they have an opportunity to file an appeal and he and she has an opportunity that due process right to go through that appeal process like before you go i'm happy to talk with anybody after this is over direct them to find these processes and stuff online Mike, hey, mark you just this is not a criminal two questions this is not a criminal investigation that that he's under number one and number two what latitude do coaches and you have to suspend players just because you say I don't like your behavior. It's you know it's in contrast to do they do they have a voice? You know can can you can you uh, subjectively suspend anybody you want? Uh, you have an opportunity, obviously, Mike. With with any time you're with the coach and it's a student athlete discipline matter. You know you and the coach spend time with each other to address those matters on a case by case basis. Uh, with respect to any criminal activity, you know I would encourage you, uh, you know, to talk to 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 Chief Clark on campus. Uh, this isn't just any player. This is a player that's been a lot of talk about him on Twitter. Um, and you do have the authority to, to bench someone pending these, the investigation. You and Coach Patino were brought in to sort of clean this stuff up. I mean, should, should you keep your job? We have worked incredibly hard to provide a first-class experience for any student-athlete that comes to our program. And since I got here in June of 2016, we've talked very hard about we want to make sure that we are defined by our actions, by having great humility, and by representing this institution in a first-class manner. 
And I feel like each time we are faced with a situation involving any student athlete, any staff member, we want to handle them appropriately and swiftly. And we feel like we've been very consistent in that process. Um, I know you talk a lot about process. The general public doesn't care about that. They see an individual who was the top shot block in America, defensive player of the year, who was accused of sexual assault twice in the span of a month, played the 2016-17 season, and then he's played the bulk of the season. Given that, why should people trust you in this administration going forward, and why should they trust Richard Pitino as the head of this basketball program, since that's how it looks from the outside? People should trust the procedures that we have in place. You know, and, and I talked about at the beginning of the press conference. We have procedures that have been reviewed by outside agencies. We have procedures that people have focused on and worked on and have followed. And those procedures include providing due process for everybody involved. And it's my job as the athletic director. It's Coach Patino's job as the head coach to make sure we support everybody involved. And we do that in every case we deal with. How did you make the decision to suspend Lynch from athletic competition, but not from practice? Every time you have a student athlete situation, you always want to look at it from a holistic perspective and the totality. And we felt that when we suspend a student athlete, uh, we suspend it from athletic competition. Uh, we want to make sure that student athlete has access to athletic medicine and treatment, to academic services, an uh, opportunity to continue to, to compete and be around his team from that standpoint. So we felt it was important to, to go that direction. Mark, a lot of questions were raised about the EOAA during the football process. Some were suspended and then eventually cleared. Uh, in this case, did they interview Reggie and the victim and others, or is it just those two? And if you can't answer it specifically, just in general, how thorough are those investigations? Again, you'd have to talk to you about how, how they handle investigations. You know, athletics, as you know, again, they're students first. There's a student discipline process that any student on this campus goes through. And as the athletic director, we have an athletic process that we have to work through. And when information is made available to me as the athletic director, then we have to make decisions. So in any situation where EOA is involved, uh, they handle the investigation, not athletics. They handle the investigation. They provide information to us. And then we have to react and make decisions on our part with respect to our athletic policy. Have you read the report on Reggie? Again, I can't get into specifics. I got time for two more guys here. Uh, Dave. Mark, uh, so there's like two and a half, three months left in this season. Is there anything that could happen that where his suspension could be lifted, he, he could play again? Well, again, you, you always, if information becomes available on any student athlete. I've been reading a lot of the chatter on social media, and it sounds like a lot of people on campus are not surprised that these allegations are coming out, that he was known to have conducted himself like this. When does it, when does that investigation, does the student have to come forward and make those claims and start an official investigation? Or how does that process work when it's officially investigated? Yeah, again, I would encourage you to visit with EOA and, and, and how that's handled. Can you go, Mark? Can, can you, if, if Twitter's blowing up and somebody says, hey, Mark, did you see this on Twitter? Can you go forward and begin to investigate yourself or not? Well, again, my job as the athletic director, again, is to manage our department and our program. And if information becomes available on any student athlete, we obviously work with our campus to make sure if anything comes up, they handle the investigation. Uh, I don't mean to repeat myself, and I know you're tired of me saying this. They are students first. We have a student policy that they have to work their way through, and then it triggers athletic policy. You were brought in. Appreciate you guys. You were brought in to replace the girl. Do you still have confidence? 